Well guys, in today's video, I'm gonna talk to you a bit about a move I could be potentially making out in the stock market and a very big move, okay? We're gonna talk about basically a position I have over $100,000 in right now. And this particular stock has gone up a lot recently, and I mean a lot, lot, just over the past few months. And we're gonna talk about if I'm thinking about selling this, what price I'm thinking about selling it, am I thinking about selling it at its current price? Does it need to go up a little bit more for me to sell it? And if I sell it, or regardless if I don't sell it, what stocks am I looking at to potentially buy out there in the stock market? We know the stock market has been going up like crazy, so it's made for not that many good deals. You really have to look hard to find any opportunities in this market right now. So that's what we're gonna be talking about. I hope you guys get a lot of value out of this video here today. I know on the channel recently, I've been talking a lot about Planet 13 stock and the market in general, honestly, along with the whole Nicholas situation, right? And so I thought we'd do something different today, talk about a position I actually hold and uh, what I could be potentially putting that money in if I go ahead and sell this stock. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video. As always, make sure you smash that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. And you know what? Listen, if we hit 7,777 thumbs up in the first 48 hours of this video, I will shave my head this weekend, okay? And I hate shaving my head. I've only done it once ever, and I absolutely hate it. And my hair's just come back nice, okay? But you know what? That was a big number, and if we hit it in the first 48 hours, I'll go ahead and do it. I'll post the pictures on the gram for you guys, okay? And you'll probably see me in future YouTube videos if I, you know, I'm only shaving it if we hit that number. Let's put it that way. Otherwise, I'm just gonna get a normal person haircut, okay? All right, you guys, let's start getting into this. So. Fizzy Get Dizzy. This is a stock we're talking about here today. I own it in two different accounts. We're going to talk about if I'm thinking about selling this position now and where could I potentially put the money. We're going to talk about the valuation of Fizzy Get Dizzy. Does it make sense to sell this one? Okay. This is the first account I own it in. We are up $22,000 on this particular position. We're up uh, almost 57% now. And in this account, we have 960 shares, okay? Cost basis on Fizzy Get Dizzy for us in this particular account is $40.42. So we're doing pretty good, needless to say, on Fizzy Get Dizzy. And when you start talking about a position you've been in very short term and you've got $22,000 in profits in just one account, you have to, you know, those thoughts start crossing your mind like, hmm, maybe just go ahead and take this profit because that is a lot of, uh, you know, profit that is made out there that I could potentially cash in, in right now. And that's just one account. My other account I hold some fizzy get dizzies in, 700 shares, okay? In that particular account, we're up $17,359 as of right now. That one's a 64% gainer. That one, the cost base is really, really nice, okay? $38.54 for cost basis on that one. And those are the two accounts I own Fizzy Get Dizzy's. So you add up those numbers, we have nearly $40,000 in profits right now. If we went ahead and sold out, $40,000, okay? This is why I have to consider potentially selling. When you're talking about almost $40,000 in profit, yeah, you gotta, you gotta at least think, hmm, maybe, maybe, okay? And as you guys know, I took some profits on the call options I had in Fizzy Get Dizzy that just, I think it was like two weeks ago now. And I went ahead and took that profit and that was a beautiful profit. I think it was like over $13,000 in profit on those call options we had in Fizzy Get Dizzy. So just, you know, Fizzy, it has treated us well, okay? I mean, very, very well. The best part of Fizzy is this is a stock I haven't been in that long, okay? I think when I was like covering this, when I was buying in, it was like less than three months ago. I mean, this video here was right after I bought in. It was like 81 days ago. So, you know, we've been in this very short term and it has done ridiculous. Let's go ahead and look at a, uh, you know, a six month chart for this stock, okay? And you see the, the portion where we were buying in. We bought in at a very opportune time, but all, although, you know, even if you bought in before I bought in, you still bought at some pretty attractive prices like low 40s. And since that time, it has just shot up and up and up and up and up, including today's 8% plus move. And you know, when you see this type of move, you gotta at least consider, okay? Now, we're gonna get into valuation here. We're gonna get into if I'm gonna sell this stock, we're gonna get into what I you know, could be potentially buying for other stocks out there. We're gonna get into all that. But earnings are likely coming for Fizzy coming very soon. I mean, you know, we don't have an exact date, but it's probably coming within the next week or two as far as the earnings. Sometimes, you know, when it comes to National Beverage Corporation, Fizzy Get Dizzy, they just come out with earnings all of a sudden. It's like, hey, here's our earnings, okay? 
So earnings are coming very, very soon, all right? Now, I had some members in the, in the private group in the Discord chat posting some articles that over the last few days that were written and were like posted on, on Seeking Alpha. There's like all these articles. National Beverage Corporation is just falling flat. National Beverage Rally uh, called tapped out. National Beverage is a strong sell. All these articles came out of nowhere. And all I saw was just, you know, in relation to this, like, very backwards looking data, like like just looking at what's happened in the past and judging off of the future. And with a company that's a turnaround play, in my opinion, like a national beverage corporation, you can't really be thinking about this one in terms of what they did last year and the, the competition that came in last year, it's a whole different year. It's a whole different game. You know, last year, Roni Rona wasn't going on. Last year, it was, it's just a very different environment. Now, National Beverage Corporation has responded, in my opinion, very well, very well to the competition this year, okay? This, this one was classic, though, okay? The National Beverage Rally called Tapped Out. They posted that a few days ago on there. And literally, when they, when they like, wrote that, like just a few days ago, like literally the stock was in the mid fifties today. It's like 63, uh, 34 share. That's just hilarious. And by the way, before I leave Yahoo finance here, I, I saw the conversations tab. I just got to say, thank you for representing us guys. You know, I always like to represent on YouTube and on the gram, but you guys make sure we're represented like everywhere in the stock market communities. Look at this one. Fizzy get dizzy. <laughs> okay. Well done. Well done. Like that. Okay. This one, you know, from three months ago, Jeremy making this trending. <laughs> well done. Okay, guys. Guys, well done making us, you know, represent it everywhere, okay? So now with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about valuation and if I'm thinking about selling this one and what I could be potentially buying with this one, okay? Market capitalization now, $2.6 billion. Market cap's gone up quite substantially. Uh, trailing P on this one of about 21.67. Forward P on this one of 20.53. Now you guys know, although I do look at trailing P, the, the most important metric always for me is forward P when it comes to valuing a quote-unquote value stock like a fizzy get dizzy. So that 20.53, I want to judge it against its peers. So other drink makers out there, and let's see what these other drink makers are, are at, okay? Coca-Cola. So I feel very strongly that Fizzy Get Dizzy will outgrow Coca-Cola in future years, okay? So it means Fizz should, in my opinion, you know, basically be at a valuation higher, a forward P higher than something like Coca-Cola. And what do we see with Coca-Cola? A 24 forward PE. Coca-Cola has a much richer forward P on it than, than Fizzy Get Dizzy. I don't think that's right, because once again, I believe Fizz will outgrow Coke. And I'm talking revenues, and I'm talking bottom, bottom line net income. I think they will as a percent. So, you know, that's, you know, for, for at least comparing against Coke, Fizz looks kind of cheap, okay? Let's compare them against Pepsi. Pepsi, I 100% believe that Fizz will outgrow Pepsi revenues percentage and net income percentage. We're talking top line, bottom line, and here we are with Pepsi, a 23 Ford P, and where was Fizz? It was like 20 point, what was it, 59? So once again, quite a bit lower for Fizz versus Pepsi, despite the fact that I believe Fizz will grow stronger. Monster Beverage Corporation, okay? Monster Beverage Corporation trades really rich. To fizz. Now, who knows which company will grow stronger? Let's just say Monster grows stronger, okay? Okay, Monster grows stronger, but still, is Monster gonna grow, grow that much stronger than fizz? In my opinion, no, okay? I think energy category, as far as energy drinks, I think they will continue to expand, but mostly internationally. I think most folks that wanna drink energy drinks drink energy drinks already. Red Bull, Monster, Rockstar, whatever it is, okay? I don't think there's that much growth, at least in the United States, which is the Monster's main market. I think if they wanna to continue to grow, it really has to happen internationally. But once again, almost a 33 forward P for Monster. That's extremely rich versus Fizz's 20.59, right? Let's look at Keurig Dr. Pepper. Well, this one's right in line with basically Fizz. Now, I don't know who will grow stronger here. I think Fizz might grow a little stronger than Keurig Dr. Pepper, but Keurig Dr. Pepper, right around the same forward PE here, okay? Ultimately, I do not believe Fizz's forward PE is very rich, especially if compared against all their peers, okay? So look at this now. Now we're looking at basically analyst estimates. So analyst estimates have been brought up recently. These sneaky little analysts, they've begun to get less negative, but they're still negative on National Beverage Corporation. Okay, look at essentially, they have negative sales growth for this company in the current year and next year. I believe Fizz will grow sales this year for sure and probably next year as well. But for sure this year, I'm very confident that Fizz will grow sales. 
and analysts have them basically shrinking by 3.7%. But look at this here, okay? Basically, over the past 90 days, what have analysts done in relation to Fizz? They brought up their numbers. So all of a sudden, out of nowhere, these Wall Street analysts, maybe they watch my videos or something, they're starting to change their mindsets around Fizz, and now they're starting to slowly become believers in National Beverage Corporation. Look at how the numbers have raised. We're talking about April quarter, up, okay? We're talking about positive revisions, basically analysts believing, you know, things are going to be more positive than they thought they were going to be, okay? July quarter, same exact situation. The current year in general, same exact situation. And even looking at 2021, they brought up EPS 7 cents in terms of the analysts. I think analysts will continue to bring up numbers for this one, okay? So when you look at all that, at the end of the day, I can't sell this one yet, okay? Keyword is yet. But if we're talking this one goes over 80, which if, if Fizz Olsen announces they're actually growing revenues, you know, things are going to get very exciting because like I said, the analysts are expecting this one to continue to go down as far as revenues and profits and pretty much everything across the board. So if all of a sudden they can come in and it's like, hey guys, we just grew, it doesn't have to be a huge number. Even if they grow like revenue 3%, it's a game changer for Fizz in terms of the way these analysts are looking at it and Wall Street's looking at it in general. It's a company in decline. All of a sudden, they start showing those revenues up. It's huge, okay? Now, let's say, for instance, if I sold this one, what will I be interested in potentially buying with that money? And keep in mind, uh, it, when I bought Fizz, I bought that not just as a stock I thought would go up over time, but also as a good balance sheet play and as a stock that adds diversification. It's a drink maker, okay? Which is why I could potentially hold that one long term, but if it goes up above 80, I, I may have to consider at least selling some shares, if not a lot of shares, okay, if it goes over 80. But I really bought that one for diversification reasons, okay? Coke and Pepsi, I'm not interested in buying those. There's no way I'm gonna sell out of Fizzy and take that profit and go put that money in Coke and Pepsi. Not that I believe Coke and Pepsi are bad, companies. Nothing wrong with them. Nothing wrong with those companies. I just don't think they're very good values. I don't think they're good values. I think their main products are what? Soda? And ultimately, at the end of the day, soda is a, a business that's pretty much in decline in a lot of the developed world. It just really is. You know, a lot of people have moved away from, you know, especially in my generation, the millennials, and including the, the up and coming generation, a lot of them, you know, if they're going to get something to drink, they're not getting a Coke. They're not getting a Pepsi. There's just a lot of folks out there that have just, you know, moved away from that. A lot of the younger folks are just not getting into that type of stuff and they're looking for more natural type beverages or things like carbon waters, flavored waters, things like, you know, fizz mix with LaCroix, right? That's the whole movement. So at the end of the day, once again, Coke and Pepsi aren't bad. I'm not putting my money there, okay? Monster, Monster Beverage Corporation. This is a company that made me a lot of money back in the day when Monster was in its big growth days, okay? Made me a lot of money, did very well with that stock. It's probably one of my top 10 stocks ever in terms of percentage gainers. And I haven't owned it in a couple of years. Valuation got too rich for me. But I will say Monsters expect to get back to nice growth, 10% growth expected next year, and you know, very strong EPS expected next year at 241. So it looks like the business is getting back on the right track. And since I sold out a couple years ago, the valuation hasn't gone up that much. I think when I sold out of this one, I think it was a, a you know a very low $30 billion market cap. It hasn't gone up that much. It's like a $36 billion market cap here today. Okay, so it hasn't gone you know, much of anywhere last few years, but I will say the Ford P of 32, I'm not a huge fan of that, okay? Monster's a potential buy, but I really like Monster when it trades in mid-20s forward P. Anywhere's in that 24 to like 27 forward P, like I've been able to get Monster a few times in the past, that's when it's a really, really, really good deal, okay? Now, with 32, not so much. 25, 26, 27, okay, now we're talking. But it's a potential buy, not just for the product, but look at the balance sheet. $1.3 billion in cash and non-existent debts for Monster. That's a lot of money just sitting around in cash. And you guys know I love some great balance sheet companies and Monster definitely, definitely fits that criteria. No different than Fizz. Fizz has like $260 million, if I recall, in cash sitting around and no debt. And it's a very small market capitalization company. It's one of the you know best balance sheets. It's the best balance sheet actually in the soft drink category. Number two best balance sheet in the soft drink category is Monster. Uh, you know, phenomenal brand. I guess they just, you know, when you saw all those monsters, it adds up to a lot of money in the end. 
But we will, we have to mention this. When you talk about Monster, you have to talk about Bang Energy. This is a player that came out of nowhere the last like three years. Bang Energy over the last few years came out of nowhere. It was like, you know, we'll never even heard of this company. And they just came out and they're in there almost every store you can possibly go to now. Bang Energy's like distributed out of nowhere. Demand went crazy. They, they you know, the, the, the CEO over there, He's, he really understands how to use social media and get people interested in the, in the, in the brand that Bang is, is ultimately building. And they, they found a way to attack the market in a different way marketing-wise than Monster really has. And so you look at Bang Energy and, and I got to say it's, it's grown like crazy and it's become a, an actual major competitive threat to Red Bull, Monster, and anybody else in that space. But we will say Monster has competed and fought back hard with their Rain Energy product. And this is basically a product that is for direct competition with Bang Energy. There's no doubt about it. Rain is in direct competition with Bang, okay? And it was Monster's response to the fact that ultimately, I think a lot of people that maybe drank Monster historically went over and said, you know what, I think I'm gonna start drinking this, this product Bang. And the way it was marketed, it was a little different, it was a little out there, and you know, people thought maybe it's a healthier product or something something like that and they went over and tried that and rain now people some people that drank bang energy have switched over sides to rain energy and some people that haven't really decided what which product they like better they're you know they're choosing rain so you know it, it's it's a tough competitive fight there but you do have to mention that Keurig Dr. Pepper KDP very much a possibility I buy this one there's really only one issue I can see with this stock that makes me a little hesitant of buying this particular stock but I can tell you it's definitely a possibility for me to buy as a dividend stock. I really like this one, okay? Market capitalization hasn't gone much of anywhere over the last several quarters. And, you know, I ultimately, I like that as an investor. I don't want to see, you know, a, a stock price continue to go up and up and up. I like to buy into stock prices that have been flatlining or, you know, ultimately down for a certain amount of time. So I definitely like that. Forward P on this one, very fair, a 20.79. You know, in this type of market that we're in right now, it's not easy to find your fair, fair PEs or maybe even undervalued PEs. And Keurig Dr. Pepper, with their Keurig products, obviously, the K-Cups, you know that brand, right? Dr. Pepper, 7-Up, and many other brands this company owns, I actually like it. I think it's a really stable company. I think it's at a fair PE, and I like it. The only thing I don't like with this one, the only reason I haven't bought it yet is because of that balance sheet. Awful, 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 awful balance sheet. I will say that, okay? Only $75 million in cash, and the company has about $14 billion in debt, unfortunately. So, I really, really want to buy this one. I'm just not sure I can get over the fact that, man, that, you know, that balance sheet is awful, guys. It is so bad. It's like, Keurig, Dr. Pepper, do you guys have to have such a bad balance sheet? This would easily be a stock I already bought. The only good thing is, w when it comes to them, is at the end of the day, people are going to continue to buy their products. So the chances this company goes bankrupt or faces any type of real financial hardship because of their bad balance sheet, pretty slim versus some other companies where you have to keep a lot of cash around, okay? Now, we're out of the soft drink category, so we, we just learned Monster is a possibility, Keurig Dr. Pepper is uh, you know, a possibility, Monster is more about valuation coming down, Keurig Dr. Pepper, it's more about you know just ultimately the balance sheet getting to a better place. Planet 13, a possibility I could put some more money in this one. Now, I do have to watch myself. I can't make this into too big of a position because it is speculative still. Okay, there's no doubt about it. It is still a speculative stock. Yeah, I believe a lot in it. Yeah, I'm already getting some, you know, unbelievable gains in this one. I think I'll get a lot bigger gains over the next several years in this name. But I, I have to watch myself. So I could put some more money in Planet 13, but I can't put a hundred and something thousand dollars more in Planet 13, or can I? No, I'm just kidding. No, I really can't. I can't go that heavy with this one. I already have, oh gosh. I don't know how many shares I hold right now. It might be 40,000, 50,000 plus shares of Planet 13 already. So I could add, you know, for sure another 10,000 shares, maybe even another 20,000 shares, but I have to watch my position sizing on this one because, well, you know, you never know. With some of these, you know, uh, companies on the come up, you never know if they falter, management doesn't execute, and, you know, all of a sudden it's a zero dollar stock or something like that, and I put, you know, a crazy amount of money in. Can't have that, okay? There's too much money to be making too big of mistakes like that, okay? although I think we'll make some good money there. Foot Locker, definitely a possibility for Foot Locker. I, I would like this one a little lower, but even here, I gotta say it's a, it's a pretty interesting value. I mean, we all know Foot Locker and we know the brands Foot Locker owns. Super solid company. Obviously, you know, hurt tremendously by the whole Rony Rona situation. Malls being shut down. It's, it's you know, devastating to the business model. 
But that one, I'm very confident that, you know, in future years, it'll be higher priced than it is now, especially if we look out, you know, three years from now, four years from now, okay? Winning resorts, definitely a possibility. Winning resorts, main issue I'm having is, uh, you know, the stocks ran a lot from those lows where it hit $35, $40 a share. It's, it's basically doubled up since then, over doubled up. I would love win under $80. Or in a scenario where we get some Macau clarity, because in Macau, we haven't really gotten any numbers. By the way, don't even look at that forward P of win. That is not a true forward P. Their forward P is probably closer to that trailing P or maybe even higher than that. But I would love some Macau clarity. We got this news out today. Macau tourism boss flags of May visitors up versus April lows. That's a potentially a good thing there. But still, we need a lot more clarity than that, okay? So ultimately, stay tuned, and uh, I'll let you guys know, you know, whatever I end up deciding to do with the Fizzy Get Dizzy over time, those earnings will be huge coming up. And, uh, you know, we'll see what I buy out there. I would love the market to go lower. It would, it would uh, you know, make for some even better deals out there, okay? By the way, if you never check out the description, make sure you guys check out the description before you leave today's video. I've got a ton of, re you know, free resources for you guys down there, as well as if you want to learn anymore more about my private group you can go ahead and learn that down there but definitely check out the free resources at least so hope you guys enjoyed today's video as always hope you got some value out of that talking about a lot of different stocks as well as my you know thoughts around you know selling a position for a profit like that so uh you know hit that thumbs up button as always uh, but maybe don't because 7,777 thumbs up and i'll shave my head this weekend and, and uh i don't think we we've never hit that number before in this channel so i don't think we'll hit it but you know we'll see thank you for watching and have a great day